Welcome to the next segment of the Resito and Nem Carnival Week. This is going to be a tribute to the later Aurelian legend himself, Brother Resistance, brought to you by the QRC OBA and the Prefect Administration. Um, thanks for the invitation to participate in this event on behalf of Brother Resistance, Lutalo Makosa Masimba. Um, Brother Resistance is my brother, and we both alumni of Queens Royal College. The brother, the brother. The brother, the brother. <laughs> wow. Um, there are quite a lot. Um, but I think one that stands out to me is my first time at QRC um, in first form. When I came to QRC in first form, resistance was in upper six. And Usually that time of the year, September, October, November, is the period of intercult football. And I always remember that resistance was the lifeblood behind the support for the football. And that he, take, he took calypsos and converted them to chance to support the team. And along with some of his school colleagues, they would stencil t-shirts for the supporters. And also following that term into the second to last term of, of um, 72 to 17, um, 72 to 73, uh, there was a competition, a DJ competition that was held by one of the radio stations and they invited resistance to participate in the competition. And he had to go with a sobriquet. And his schoolmates say, boy, you always resistant things, you know, you should go to the name Resistance. So that's really how he got the name Resistance. And eventually it morphed into the name Brother Resistance over time. He was also part of a DJ group called, um, sorry, I can't remember the name, but he was also part of a DJ group, which, which is what allowed him um, the ability to participate in that event. In fact, he did win the event that year, actually. Uh, I smile because it's, it, it's a long, deep relationship. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we were six years apart, so I really only truly connected with his music after studying and coming back to Trinidad. And um, on the People's Mall, like I mentioned earlier, he had an event called the Sabah Album Launch. And I saw the impact of the album launch in this small space where Calibisonians will come from all over the country. People like Super Blue, Black Stalin, um, Scrunter would all come to the People's Mall to launch their music. And the launch was a public launch. You put, and those days would be vinyl records, right? They weren't, we weren't in the digital age of CDs and all that. But this is where the public had an opportunity to hear the new music for, for the first time. So he had a shop on, on People's Mall called Uprising Culture Shop, where he also sold records and, and cassettes. But it was a small space and um, I worked with him in moving the launch to Central Bank, so we have a launch at Central Bank Plaza. But during 1990, when we had the attempted coup, he was not in Trinidad. And in fact, 1990, he launched an event called Rapso, National Day Rapso, which was a media event. In 1991, when we came back to Trinidad, we spoke and we decided, let's have an exhibition. So we hosted um, an exhibition at the Heritage Library on Knox Street. Um, and also want to point out that he had a very strong relationship with the National Libraries in Trinidad and Tobago. So they allowed us to use their space to have a, an exhibition of material related to Rapso and to Trinidad. And the plan was to have a couple performances when the library closed at about five in the evening. But at around five, electricity went. And we actually went next door to um, City Hall to ask if we could use their hall. And as fate would have it, the hall was almost filled to capacity that evening. Um, close to 200 plus people just showed up. So maybe that was the reason why electricity went. And on that evening, now prior to that day, um, Lancer Kibulun was, as we identify, as what we consider the father of the Rapso movement. Resistance and people like Brother Chet Swayo and a couple other names that people hardly know were the main artists doing Rapso, but Resistance was the more prominent one. So it really didn't have any young people performing Rapso, but on that night in 1991, 
we had three groups that I always remember that performed that evening. You had a group called Kindred, um, the members of which were Omari and Akinde. And they did a track called This Trini Could Flow. Did you know, did you know that This Trini Could Flow? Which was their way of saying that we all, yes, young people listen to American rap, but we could also flow, right? You also had a, a young man, um, Ruben Ari Victor, who might be Subrique Chantwell, who performed as well. And then there was a group called Homefront, which included um, Ozzy Magic. At the time, he was called Ozzy Merrick. Um, Mark Jimenez, who's now known as Atta Clan. And there's a female member, I can't recall the name right now. Following their performance, they became part of Caribbean Song Basin's initiative of pushing Caribbean music. They got contracts. So that kind of opened the door for a lot of young people to connect with who we are as a people, how we speak. He always had a strong connection with young people. So any opportunity that he had to interact with young people, and, and a good example is Kiyasi here. I mean, I, I brought him in a few times to talk to different levels of the school, uh, sixth form at one time. Uh, another time he spoke to a whole general assembly. Um, and as I indicated with the workshops that we had with the festival, 
that was also an avenue he used to reach young people in particular. Um, he had a strong view on, on women in society. And one of the rhapsodes he wrote was a piece called Homegrown Violence. Um, violence against women is a tragedy approved by the norms of society. So usually when they, used to have, when they would have national events in relation to women and violence, he would be invited to participate and speak or either perform. And so the music was one thing, but anytime he had an opportunity to make a contribution in a positive light, he would take it, uh, whether it be to young people or a community. Uh, one thing I also want to point out is even with the Rapso Festival, with the community events, we go to an event that would be 15 people in the community event participating, and that wouldn't matter. The same energy he would put out for an event he would have done in California with 70,000 people, the same energy he would put out for 15 people in an audience. And Tim, it was about connecting, right, and leaving a mark, leaving a, a message. Um, respect. Um, and I think if you, if you listen, he kind of ties back his view on women to Mother Earth, because just as how we both had a mother, Mother Earth is the mother to all of us. So it's about respecting and, um, and recognizing that they are people of, that you need to provide support behind, right? Um, and I, I, I kind of refer back to his rap so about homegrown violence because to me that said what he, how we he saw it. We grew up in a community where um, certain, things, certain things were the norm, which was um, men beating women because they came, the, the husband came home and there was no food on the table, or the guy came home drunk and whatever. Um, so his stance was, you know, whatever you do, you need to respect the females in our society. So I want to applaud Kiasi for that um, approach. Um, I think that's where it needs to start, where you start to socialize your young men to recognize that um, the females in our society need more respect than they are given. And there are other ways to deal with um, conflict. And it should not resort to a violent approach. Always look the other way, take some time, reflect, and dialogue. All right, so applause to KRC for that event, um, effort.
I come to deliver this word that the voice of the down press be heard over the world. Let the people's story be told. Well, it's a long, long time now we come out for action. Glory days come down. There's a second emotion. Rock the rock the rhythm. Oh, oh. Ring the bell, ring the bell, long day. But he didn't study in London, he studied at UWI, but he went to London as part of um, a book writer's festival. And that is where he had opportunities to interact with other writers like himself and to also carry his music. And it is there that he did some of his recordings, um, bringing his band up at times and um, and also where he would have done a lot of radio interviews, he would have done workshops at universities in the UK. Um, so that's where his, his, his development really um, started to bloom um, as an artist and a writer. Very well recognized, London, France, Germany. Yeah, yeah. Um, tributes came in from London. Um, there's a tribute in Germany, one of the Backup singers that would work with him when he worked in Germany, they did an, an event to recognize him. Um, there was some work, some tributes done in Paris. Um, there's a tribute in London as well. Uh, there was an article in The Guardian from London, London Guardian, UK Guardian, sorry. So tributes came in from all over the world, you know. So. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. So I could say he spent a lot of time in the UK, but always came back to Trinidad. Um, he had an opportunity to stay out and live in the UK, but he always came back to Trinidad because this is where he saw himself and he saw the importance of his work and he needed to share his work with Trinidad. Besides sharing with the world, Trinidad is, is, was, the, was the birthplace. So Junior attempted coup, which was 1990. Um, 27th of July, 1990. Um, not being in Trinidad, there was a lot of uncertainty as to what was going on. And you'll see a lot of stories. So during that period that he was out, he wrote a rap so called Nation Time, um, which was really about, was a nation building um, piece that called for together we aspire, together we achieve, right? Coming together for we truly believe. Nation Time. Ready? Are you ready? Head the nation cry. 
Don't take it for granted, Lord. You ready? Are you ready? Sacrifice yourself and move with the pride. Keep up the struggle now. Strength on your shrine is nation time. What time it is? I said it's nation time. What time it is? I said it's nation time. What time it is? Together we aspire, together we achieve. You have to come together if you truly believe it's nation time. What time it is? Nation time. Together we aspire, together we achieve. You have to come together if you truly believe it's nation time. What time it is? For what? Now is the time You have to make a commitment Lord, you ready? Are you ready? We come so far We have to celebrate we achievement You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You must control Put the shoulder to the wheel With your heart and soul Nation time What time it is? Nation time Nation time What time it is? Nation time Nation time What time it is?